Section 14 of The Art of Cookery Made Plain and Easy by Hannah Glass. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Chapter 4 To Make a Number of Pretty Little Dishes Fit for a Supper or Side Dish and Little Corner Dishes for a Great Table and the rest you have in the chapter for Lent. Hog's Ears Forced Take four hog's ears and half boil them, or take them soused. Make a force meat thus. Take half a pound of beef suet, as much crumbs of bread, an anchovy, some sage. Boil and chop very fine a little parsley. Mix all together with the yolk of an egg, a little pepper. Slit your ears very carefully to make a place for your stuffing. Fill them, flour them, and fry them in fresh butter till they are of a fine brown. Then pour out all the fat clean, and put to them half a pint of gravy, a glass of white wine, three teaspoonfuls of mustard, a piece of butter as big as a nutmeg rolled in flour, a little pepper, a small onion whole. Cover them close, and let them stew softly for half an hour, shaking your pan now and then. When they are enough, lay them in your dish, and pour your sauce over them, but first take out the onion. This makes a very pretty dish, but if you would make a fine large dish, take the feet, and cut all the meat into small thin pieces, and stew with the ears. Season with salt to your palate. To force coxcombs. Parboil your coxcombs, then open them with a point of a knife at the great end. Take the white of a fowl, as much bacon and beef marrow, cut these small and beat them fine in a marble mortar. Season them with salt, pepper and grated nutmeg, and mix it with an egg. Fill the coxcombs and stew them in a little strong gravy softly for half an hour. Then slice in some fresh mushrooms and a few pickled ones. Then beat up the yolk of an egg in a little gravy, stirring it. Season with salt. When they are enough, dish them up in little dishes or plates. To preserve coxcombs. Let them be well cleaned. Then put them into a pot with some melted bacon and boil them a little. About half an hour after, Add a little bay salt, some pepper, a little vinegar, a lemon sliced, and an onion stuck with cloves. When the bacon begins to stick to the pot, take them up, put them into the pan you would keep in, lay a clean linen cloth over them, and pour melted butter clarified over them, to keep them close from the air. These make a pretty plate at a supper. To preserve or pickle pig's feet and ears. Take your feet and ears single and wash them well. Split the feet in two, put a bay leaf between every foot, put in almost as much water as will cover them. When they are well steamed, add to them cloves, mace, whole pepper and ginger, coriander seed and salt, according to your discretion. Put to them a bottle or two of Rhenish wine, according to the quantity you do, half a score of bay leaves and a bunch of sweet herbs. Let them boil softly till they are very tender, then take them out of the liquor, lay them in an earthen pot, then strain the liquor over them. When they are cold, cover them down close and keep them for use. You should let them stand to be cold, skim off all the fat, and then put in the wine and spice. Pig's feet and ears another way. Take two pig's ears soused, cut them into long slips about three inches, and about as thick as a goose quill. Put them in a stew pan with a pint of good gravy, and half an onion cut very fine. Stew them till they are tender. Then add a little butter rolled in flour, a spoonful of mustard, some pepper and salt, a little elder vinegar. Toss them up and put them in a dish. Have the feet cut in two and put a bay leaf between. Tie them up and boil them very tender in water and a little vinegar, with an onion or two. Rub them over with the yolk of an egg, 
and sprinkle breadcrumbs on them. Broil or fry them and put them round the ears. To pickle ox palates. Take your palates, wash them well with salt and water, and put them in a pipkin with water and some salt. And when they are ready to boil, skim them well, and put to them pepper, cloves, and mace, as much as will give them a quick taste. When they are boiled tender, which will require four or five hours, peel them and cut them into small pieces, and let them cool. Then make the pickle of white wine and vinegar an equal quantity. Boil the pickle, and put in the spices that were boiled in the pallets. When both the pickle and pallets are cold, lay your pallets in a jar, and put to them a few bay leaves and a little fresh spice. Pour the pickle over them, cover them close, and keep them for use. Of these, you may at any time make a pretty little dish, either with brown sauce or white, or butter and mustard and a spoonful of white wine, or they are ready to put in made dishes. To stew cucumbers. Take six cucumbers, pare them, and cut them in two, lengthways. Take out the seeds, take a dozen small round-headed onions peeled. Put some butter in a stew pan, melt it, put in your onions and fry them brown. Then put a spoonful of flour in, stir it till it is smooth, put in three quarters of a pint of brown gravy and stir it all the time. Then put in your cucumbers with a glass of Lisbon. Stew them till they are tender. Season with pepper and salt and a little cayenne pepper to your liking. Observe to skim it well because the butter will rise to the top. Send them to table in a dish or under your meat. Two ragu cucumbers. Take two cucumbers, two onions, slice them and fry them in a little butter, then drain them in a sieve. Put them into a saucepan, add six spoonfuls of gravy, two of white wine, a blade of mace. Let them stew five or six minutes. Then take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour, a little salt and cayenne pepper. Shake them together and when it is thick, dish them up. A fricassee of kidney beans. Take a quart of the seed, when dry, soak them all night in river water, then boil them on a slow fire till quite tender. Take a quarter of a peck of onions, slice them thin, fry them in butter till brown. Then take them out of the butter and put them in a quart of strong drawn gravy. Boil them till you may mash them fine. Then put in your beans and give them a boil or two. Season with pepper, salt and nutmeg. To dress Windsor beans. Take the seed, boil them till they are tender, then blanch them and fry them in clarified butter. Melt butter with a drop of vinegar and pour over them. Stew them with salt, pepper and nutmeg or you may eat them with butter, sack, sugar, and a little powder of cinnamon. To make jumbles. Take a pound of fine flour and a pound of fine powder sugar. Make them into a light paste with whites of eggs beat fine. Then add half a pint of cream, half a pound of fresh butter melted, and a pound of blanched almonds well beat. Knead them together thoroughly with a little rose water and cut out your jumbles in what figures you fancy, and either bake them in a gentle oven, or fry them in fresh butter, and they make a pretty side or corner dish. You may melt a little butter with a spoonful of sack, and throw fine sugar all over the dish. If you make them in pretty figures, they make a fine little dish. To make a ragu of onions. Take a pint of little young onions, peel them, and take four large ones, peel them, and cut them very small. Put a quarter of a pound of good butter into a stew pan. When it is melted and done making a noise, throw in your onions and fry them till they begin to look a little brown. Then shake in a little flour and shake them round till they are thick. 
throw in a little salt, a little beaten pepper, a quarter of a pint of good gravy, and a teaspoonful of mustard. Stir all together, and when it is well tasted, and of good thickness, pour it into your dish, and garnish it with fried crumbs of bread. They make a pretty little dish, and are very good. You may stew raspings in the room of flour, if you please. A ragu of oysters. Open twenty large oysters, take them out of their liquor, save the liquor, and dip the oysters in a batter made thus. Take two eggs, beat them well, a little lemon peel grated, a little nutmeg grated, a blade of mace pounded fine, a little parsley chopped fine. Beat all together with a little flour, have ready some butter or dripping in a stew pan. When it boils, dip in your oysters one by one into the batter, and fry them of a fine brown. Then, with an egg slice, take them out and lay them in a dish before the fire. Pour the fat out of the pan and shake a little flour over the bottom of the pan. Then rub a little piece of butter, as big as a small walnut, all over with your knife whilst it is over the fire. Then pour in three spoonfuls of the oyster liquor strained, one spoonful of white wine, and a quarter of a pint of gravy. Grate a little nutmeg, stir all together, throw in the oysters, give the pan a toss round, and when the sauce is of a good thickness, pour all into the dish, and garnish with raspings. A ragu of asparagus. Scrape a hundred of grass very clean, and throw it into cold water. When you have scraped all, cut as far as is good and green, about an inch long, and take two heads of endive clean, washed and picked, cut it very small, a young lettuce, clean washed and cut small, a large onion, peeled and cut small. Put a quarter of a pound of butter into a stew pan. When it is melted, throw in the above things. Toss them about and fry them ten minutes. Then season them with a little pepper and salt. Shake in a little flour, toss them about, then pour in half a pint of gravy. Let them stew till the sauce is very thick and good. Then pour all into your dish. Save a few of the little tops of the grass to garnish the dish. Note well, you must not fry the asparagus. Boil it in a little water and put them into your ragu, and then they will look green. A ragu of livers. Take as many livers as you would have for your dish. A turkey's liver and six fowl's livers will make a pretty dish. Pick the galls from them and throw them into cold water. Take the six livers, put them in a saucepan with a quarter of a pint of gravy, a spoonful of mushrooms, either pickled or fresh, a spoonful of ketchup, a little piece of butter as big as a nutmeg, rolled in flour. Season them with pepper and salt to your palate. Let them stew softly ten minutes. In the meanwhile, butter one side of a piece of writing paper and wrap the turkey's liver on it and broil it nicely. Lay it in the middle and the stewed livers round. Pour the sauce all over and garnish with lemon. Two ragu cauliflowers. Take a large cauliflower, wash it very clean, and pick it in pieces as for pickling. Make a nice brown cullis, and stew them till tender. Season with pepper and salt. Put them into your dish with the sauce over. Boil a few sprigs of the cauliflower in water to garnish with. Stewed peas and lettuce. Take a quart of green peas, two large cabbage lettuces, cut small across and washed very clean. Put them in a stew pan with a quart of gravy and stew them till tender. Put in some butter rolled in flour, season with pepper and salt. When of a proper thickness, dish them up. Note well, some like them thickened with the yolks of four eggs, others like an onion chopped very fine and stewed with them with two or three rashers of lean ham. Another way to stew peas. Take a pint of peas, 
put them in a stew pan with a handful of chopped parsley. Just cover them with water, stew them till tender, then beat up the yolks of two eggs, put in some double refined sugar to sweeten them, put in the eggs and toss them up, then put them in your dish. Cod sounds broiled with gravy. Scald them in hot water and rub them with salt well. Blanch them, that is, take off the black dirty skin, then set them on in cold water, and let them simmer till they begin to be tender. Take them out and flour them, and broil them on the gridiron. In the meantime, take a little good gravy, a little mustard, a little bit of butter rolled in flour, give it a boil, season it with pepper and salt. Lay the sounds in your dish, and pour your sauce over them. A forced cabbage. Take a fine white heart cabbage, about as big as a quarter of a peck. Lay it in water two or three hours, then half boil it. Set it in a cullender to drain. Then very carefully cut out the heart, but take great care not to break off any of the outside leaves. Fill it with force meat, made thus. Take a pound of veal, half a pound of bacon, fat and lean together. Cut them small and beat them fine in a mortar with four eggs boiled hard. Season it with pepper and salt, a little beaten mace, a very little lemon peel cut fine, some parsley chopped fine, a very little thyme, and two anchovies. When they are beat fine, take the crumb of a stale roll, some mushrooms, if you have them, either pickled or fresh, and the heart of the cabbage you cut out, chopped fine. Mix all together with the yolk of an egg. Then fill the hollow part of the cabbage and tie it with a pack thread. Then lay some slices of bacon to the bottom of a stew pan or saucepan, and on that a pound of coarse lean beef cut thin. Put in the cabbage, cover it close, and let it stew over a slow fire till the bacon begins to stick to the pan. Shake in a little flour, then pour in a quart of broth an onion stuck with cloves, two blades of mace, some whole pepper, a little bundle of sweet herbs. Cover it close and let it stew very softly an hour and a half. Put in a glass of red wine, give it a boil, then take it up, lay it in the dish, and strain the gravy and pour over. Untie it first. This is a fine side dish, and the next day makes a fine hash, with a veal steak nicely broiled and laid on it. Stewed Red Cabbage Take red cabbage, lay it in cold water an hour, then cut it into thin slices across, and cut it into little pieces. Put it into a stew pan with a pound of sausages, a pint of gravy, a little bit of ham or lean bacon. Cover it close and let it stew half an hour. Then take the pan off the fire and skim off the fat. Shake in a little flour and set it on again. Let it stew two or three minutes. Then lay the sausages in your dish and pour the rest all over. You may, before you take it up, put in half a spoonful of vinegar. Savoys, forced and stewed. Take two savoys, fill one with force meat and the other without. Stew them with gravy. Season them with pepper and salt, and when they are near enough, take a piece of butter as big as a walnut rolled in flour and put in. Let them stew till they are enough and the sauce thick. Then lay them in your dish and pour the sauce over them. These things are best done on a stove. To force cucumbers. Take three large cucumbers, scoop out the pith, fill them with fried oysters, seasoned with pepper and salt. Put on the piece again you cut off, sew it with a coarse thread, and fry them in the butter the oysters are fried in. Then pour out the butter, and shake in a little flour. Pour in half a pint of gravy, shake it round, and put in the cucumbers. Season it with a little pepper and salt. Let them stew softly till they are tender, then lay them in a plate and pour the gravy over them. 
or you may force them with any sort of force meat you fancy and fry them in hog's lard and then stew them in gravy and red wine fried sausages take half a pound of sausages and six apples slice four about as thick as a crown cut the other two in quarters fry them with the sausages of a fine light brown lay the sausages in the middle of the dish and the apples round garnish with the quartered apples stewed cabbage and sausages fried is a good dish collops and eggs cut either bacon hung beef or hung mutton into thin slices broil them nicely lay them in a dish before the fire have ready a stew pan of water boiling break as many eggs as you have collops break them one by one in a cup and pour them into the stew pan when the whites of the eggs begin to harden and all look of a clear white take them up one by one in an egg slice and lay them on the collops to dress cold fowl or pigeon cut them in four quarters beat up an egg or two according to what you dress grate a little nutmeg in a little salt some parsley chopped a few crumbs of bread beat them well together dip them in this batter and have ready some dripping hot in a stew pan in which fry them of a fine light brown have ready a little good gravy thickened with a little flour mixed with a spoonful of ketchup lay the fry in the dish and pour the sauce over garnish with lemon and a few mushrooms if you have any a cold rabbit eats well done thus to mince veal cut your veal as fine as possible but do not chop it grate a little nutmeg over it shred a little lemon peel very fine throw a very little salt on it drudge a little flour over it to a large plate of veal take four or five spoonfuls of water let it boil then put in the veal with a piece of butter as big as an egg stir it well together when it is all thorough hot it is enough have ready a very thin piece of bread toasted brown cut it into three corner sippets lay it round the plate and pour in the veal just before you pour it in squeeze in half a lemon or half a spoonful of vinegar garnish with lemon you may put gravy in the room of water if you love it strong but it is better without to fry cold veal cut it in pieces about as thick as half a crown and as long as you please dip them in the yolk of an egg and then in crumbs of bread with a few sweet herbs and shred lemon peel in it grate a little nutmeg over them and fry them in fresh butter the butter must be hot just enough to fry them in in the meantime make a little gravy of the bone of the veal when the meat is fried take it out with a fork and lay it in a dish before the fire then shake a little flour into the pan and stir it round then put in a little gravy squeeze in a little lemon and pour it over the veal garnish with lemon to toss up cold veal white cut the veal into little thin bits put milk enough to it for sauce grate in a little nutmeg a very little salt a little piece of butter rolled in flour to half a pint of milk the yolks of two eggs well beat a spoonful of mushroom pickle stir all together till it is thick then pour it into your dish and garnish with lemon cold fowl skinned and done this way eats well or the best end of a cold breast of veal first fry it drain it from the fat then pour this sauce to it to hash cold mutton cut your mutton with a very sharp knife in very little bits as thin as possible then boil the bones with an onion a little sweet herbs a blade of mace a very little whole pepper a little salt a piece of crust toasted very crisp let it boil till there is just enough for sauce strain it and put it into a saucepan with a piece of butter rolled in flour put in the meat when it is very hot it is enough 
season with pepper and salt have ready some thin bread toasted brown cut three corner ways lay them round the dish and pour in the hash as to walnut pickle and all sorts of pickles you must put in according to your fancy garnish with pickles some love a small onion peeled and cut very small and done in the hash or you may use made gravy if you have not time to boil the bones to hash mutton like venison cut it very thin as above boil the bones as above strain the liquor where there is just enough for the hash to a quarter of a pint of gravy put a large spoonful of red wine an onion peeled and chopped fine a very little lemon peel shred fine a piece of butter as big as a small walnut rolled in flour put it into a saucepan with the meat shake it all together and when it is thoroughly hot pour it into your dish hash beef the same way to make collops of cold beef if you have any cold inside of a sirloin of beef take off all the fat cut it very thin in little bits cut an onion very small boil as much water or gravy as you think will do for sauce season it with a little pepper and salt and a bundle of sweet herbs let the water boil then put in the meat with a good piece of butter rolled in flour shake it round and stir it when the sauce is thick and the meat done take out the sweet herbs and pour it into your dish they do better than fresh meat to make a florentine of veal take two kidneys of veal fat and all and mince them very fine then chop a few herbs and put to it and add a few currants season it with cloves mace nutmeg and a little salt four or five yolks of eggs chopped fine and some crumbs of bread a pippin or two chopped some candied lemon peel cut small a little sack and orange flour water lay a sheet of puff paste at the bottom of your dish and put in the ingredients and cover it with another sheet of puff paste bake it in a slack oven scrape sugar on the top and serve it up hot a salamagundi take two pickled herrings and bone them a handful of parsley four eggs boiled hard the white of one roasted chicken or fowl chop all very fine separately that is the yolks of eggs by themselves and the whites the same scrape some lean boiled ham very fine hung beef or dutch beef scraped turn a small china basin or deep saucer into your dish make some butter into the shape of a pineapple or any other shape you please and set it on the top of the basin or saucer lay round your basin a ring of shred parsley then whites of eggs then ham then chicken then beef then yolks of eggs then herrings till you have covered the basin and used all your ingredients garnish the dish with whole capers and pickles of any sort you choose chopped fine or you may leave out the butter and put the ingredients on and put a flour of any sort at the top or a sprig of myrtle another way mince veal or fowl very small a pickled herring boned and picked small cucumber minced small apples minced small an onion peeled and minced small some pickled red cabbage chopped small cold pork minced small or cold duck or pigeons minced small boiled parsley chopped fine celery cut small the yolks of hard eggs chopped small and the whites chopped small and either lay all the ingredients by themselves separate on saucers or in heaps in a dish dish them out with what pickles you have and sliced lemon nicely cut and if you can get nasturtium flowers lay them round it this is a fine middle dish for supper but you may always make salamagundi of such things as you have according to your fancy the other sorts you have in the chapter of fasts to make little pasties 
Take the kidney of a loin of veal cut very fine, with as much of the fat, the yolks of two hard eggs, seasoned with a little salt, and half a small nutmeg. Mix them well together, then roll it well in a puff paste crust. Make three of it, and fry them nicely in hog's lard or butter. They make a pretty little dish for change. You may put in some carrots, and a little sugar and spice, with the juice of an orange, and sometimes apples, first boiled, and sweetened with a little juice of lemon, or any fruit you please. Petite pasties for garnishing dishes. Make a short crust, roll it thick, make them as about as big as the bowl of a spoon, and about an inch deep. Take a piece of veal, enough to fill the patty, as much bacon and beef suet, shred them all very fine, season them with pepper and salt, and a little sweet herbs. Put them into a little stew pan, keep turning them about, with a few mushrooms chopped small, for eight or ten minutes. Then fill your petty patties, and cover them with some crust. Colour them with the yolk of an egg, and bake them. Sometimes fill them with oysters for fish, of the melts of the fish pounded, and seasoned with pepper and salt. Fill them with lobsters, or what you fancy. They make a fine garnishing, and give a dish a fine look. If for a calf's head, the brain seasoned is most proper, and some with oysters. End of section 14